Hi, I'm Grace with Bougie Beaks Hen Haven, and as you can tell, it's windy out here. And <laughs> curly-headed people do not do well in the wind, and we do not do well in the humidity, and this is the south, so I have both. So let me turn around here. Okay, I think you'd much rather look at my chickens, right? Because that's why we're here. I want to talk about, because um, I did an introductory video where I tried to scare the crap out of you. No, I'm just kidding. And um, But I did an introductory video, and now I want to talk about space. How much space do you need for backyard chickens? As you can see, my birds have extensive space. The fence goes all the way all the way there and it loops around behind that building and comes back around so I have a whole lot of space my coop is 6 by 10 and my perch is inside uh, I want to say I have three perches that are six feet and then one I think that's five feet well, maybe the perches are longer than that. I can't remember. I ran a tape measure. Anyway, my point is I, I had like room for 20 to 25 birds. I have 17 right now. Like I said in my other video, I sold three, which is just really sad and hard to do. But we had some conflict. And so I, uh, oh, they have a great home though. <laughs> you miss your women. I know. We'll get you some more. Don't worry. Anyway, so I think I'm going to get maybe like eight more and I've got little peeps that I just hatched. All right, so spacing. Do you need this much space for your birds? Absolutely not, absolutely not. I'm just a nut and um, <laughs> obsessed with chickens. So this, this, the minimum, and we talked about this, like don't do the bare minimum, guys. Don't be bare minimum. But the minimum, so like if you're gonna do, this is what's considered free ranging here. Um, even though they are in a fence, but this is like so much space that they're considered free range. Free range is just when you let them, I'm going to walk over here because they're being obnoxious. Free range is just when you let them like wander all over the place, okay? Uh, I really, I have a lot of clients who free range. I, I really don't recommend it because of predators. And the number one predator of your chickens is that right there. Not her specifically. This one right here has eaten two. Yes. So the number one predator of a chicken is actually a dog, the neighbor's dog, especially if you live rurally. You know, people just kind of let their dogs run everywhere. And, and the thing is, they don't actually eat your chickens. They just sort of play with them until they don't move anymore. And then they play with the next one. And they'll get out of here. They will literally devastate an entire flock just like that. Uh, they literally play with them to death. It's really um, sad. But we can talk about predators later. Um, so I don't recommend free range. I love this netting um, because it's it just blends right in. It's easy to move around. And um, so like I said in the other video, it does pack quite a punch. And even though like when you have your shoes on and you touch it, you're like, oh, this is nothing. Touch it barefoot. <laughs> and it also depends on how well you ground it as to, to how much of a punch it packs. But if you think about it, a predator is going to come in, be coming in nose first. And actually, my neighbor's dog came over here. And uh, I kept telling him, lock that dog up. Because even though we live in the country, there's still, a, you know, there's still a containment law. And I don't want your nasty dog pooping on my property. But... It got after my chickens and it stuck its snout through one of the holes in the net. And um, I'll just tell you that he only did it once. He only ever did it once. And in fact, this guy here who ate two of my babies before when I was just free range ranging. Um, yeah, he's only done it once also. <laughs> so free range. Uh, if you are going to make a run. Okay, so you have the coop and that's where they, they go in. and Stop it. I've petted you. Go away go um that so the coop is where they go in and they have the roosts and they lay their eggs and they go in at night that is your coop the run is is the enclosed area where they like run around and scratch and peck and eat bugs and stuff like that so coop space for a standard breed chicken not a bantam which is a little one or the giant ones a standard is basically four square feet per bird all right and you want about 12, 8 to 12 inches, of, man, look at my hair, 8 to 12 inches of, of perch space per bird for a standard size bird, okay? And, and I will say that don't squash them in there. 
In the winter, they'll huddle together, but in the summer, they're gonna need space because it's gonna get hot. They breathe a lot, they poop a lot, and that's a lot of heat released. You really want them to have room to, to spread out. So if your coop holds, you know, 12 chickens, don't, don't stuff 12 in there. You may wanna back off to like 10 or something and just see and make sure they have enough room through the, the hot summer, especially if you live more, more Southern like I do. All right, so four square feet per bird in the coop itself and eight to 12 inches on a perch. And remember we said we wanted the perches to be um, two to four inches in diameter because chickens really prefer to sleep kind of flat footed like this. And um, so then the run, then the run you want about eight square feet per bird for a standard breed. For a large breed chicken, like a, um, Orpingtons, Jersey Giants, Brahmas, and roosters are big. Roosters are bigger too, so you have roosters. You want eight square feet per bird in your coop and 15 square feet per bird in your run. But guys, don't minimize. I mean, don't, don't do the bare minimum. Give them more than that. I mean, they have feelings. As you can see, I have way more than that. <laughs> But again, I'm a little bit obsessive. So space, that is gonna be your basic spacing requirements. And you definitely need to check your, like if you live in town or in a neighborhood, a lot of them will allow hens, but they will not allow roos. So if you have a rooster, you know, you may get a problem, okay? All right, so that's your basic spacing requirements. I went over some of the other stuff as far as in the coop, in the coop itself, you want ventilation, definitely want ventilation. If you, if you can't put in a solar powered um, fan like I have, at least make sure that you have, have some um, like holes or windows and then you want to cover that with like hardware cloth. It's a big misnomer. Uh, chicken wire you think you use it for chickens and you do but raccoons can tear right through that dogs can sometimes tear right through that so hardware cloth is a lot hardier so yeah ventilation is a big thing and I'll put the stats up right here for ventilation per coop and then you want a door you want a door that's kind of predator proof and I showed you in my other video two of the doors that I have I'll put links up if you uh, if you have a walk-in coop like what I have, then um, it's, it's to me it's a lot easier. But if you have one of those coops that's been built by somebody or that you bought online, uh, hopefully you didn't get it at those little cheapy places like the little tractor supply coops. But you really want everything to be kind of accessible from the outside. So the nesting boxes, you want to be able to open up and, and access the nesting boxes. You want your nesting boxes lower than your perch, okay? Here are the stats for how high to put your perches. Like 18 inches, I think is the minimum. But you also don't want it way up in the air because like birds really can't, especially if you have fat birds <laughs> and the bigger breeds, they really can't get up there. But you do want your perches at varying heights. The higher um, they, up on, they are up on the pecking order, the more dominant birds are gonna get more on the higher perches and the, the less dominant birds are gonna be on the lower perches. And you don't want, so you don't want like um, your ventilation, you don't want it to be where it's gonna blow right on your birds, especially for the winter months, because then they'll get a draft and your birdie birds will get sick when you don't want that. Bedding, bedding is the big deal. Some people use sand and then just kind of scoop it out like a, like a cat box. As I showed you in my coop, I'm using the deep bedding method, which I really love because um, you just basically, the premise is you keep adding shavings on top, shavings on top, and as they poop, you turn it in and it starts to kind of, and it doesn't even smell, that's the funny thing. Um, it starts to kind of um, decompose. You can use that as fertilizer, it's great. I literally only clean my coop about twice a year and I just keep churning it up and, and as it sort of decomposes, it lets off heat, so it's great for the winter. And, um, but some people use sand, some people use like, uh, the little wood, wood thingy doos for, um, oh, what are those things? Wood pellets, for like wood stoves. Some people go on. See, that's the thing. You pet them one time and then they're, they want to be in your lap. Do not use bedding that's dusty. So if I use pine shavings which I get at Tractor Supply. You wanna use the big pine shavings, like the flakes, and not the little ones. 
okay not the little ones because those are dustier and I really would stay away from cedar because we're gonna have Wrestlemania now cedar um it's it's very potent if you do use cedar I would just throw a couple handfuls in for odor control I wouldn't use the whole thing in cedar because I mean it can literally like make them sick with I mean think about that if you cedar smells great but do you want to smell it all day and night long no you don't and they don't either for odor in the coops like I said I don't really have much of a problem those exhaust fans really exchange the air nicely they're not expensive well that one was but I'll show you I'll put some links to some that were not expensive they're not that expensive and and herbs I grow a lot of fresh herbs and I'll just clip some and and toss them in with when I'm churning up the bedding and it, it just it makes the coop smell better you know but I really don't have much of a stinky problem I have dogs they stink predators predators are a big fat hairy deal chickens are prey animals and all kinds of predators are gonna try to come and get your birds and I'll make a video on just predators and predator proofing but like I said chicken wire is is a bit flimsy and can be torn through it can break with enough pressure and some of these predators are relentless coyotes dogs raccoons are big ones and remember that raccoons can use their little footsie doos to undo things so that's why I love using the locking latches like I pointed out in my other video um, skunks skunks will come in owls I've seen people with owls will get in their coops I don't know how they do that but somehow they do and um, oh what's another one possums possums is another one that'll get in there cats stray cats yeah they love those um, like I said I have really not had many problems with ground predators because of this fencing now air predators that's another story I did I do have uh, a resident hawk that that likes to swoop in from time to time I've put up scarecrows I put up those um, those dangly things that help to reflect those reflector things I showed in my other video here I'll show you right now I got one right here you see those things swinging back and forth right there and right there those are great you can see my little scarecrow there my feeding stations so that when they're eating and distracting they're covered I got another one over there and then I think in my other video I showed what I call my hawk hiders these are just big nets that I put out uh, for shade because I have no trees and then of course they can get under this coop which they love to do because it's cool okay I'm gonna cut this off so that is spacing requirements for your birds and um, a lot of those runs have uh, they're like covered and you don't have to have a covered run just be be aware that sh they do need shade especially in the summer months so you, you may want to do some with shade and some with not you don't want to fully shade it like completely cover it to where they're not getting any sunlight because they'll get depressed um, I think that's it if you have any questions post them in the comments I'll try to get to you this has been Grace with Bougie Beaks Hen Haven. Please like, please subscribe. I'm trying to start a whole new channel here, and I need your support. Thanks.